Hey everybody, it's Notorious. Welcome back to my channel. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about carabiners and how to determine whether or not they are fit for duty. You know, we use carabiners in climbing for just about every connection that we make, and a lot of those connections are life supporting, and the ones that aren't are still very important. We don't want the payload to drop. Um, we don't want anything to come undone without us undoing it. So let's get to this. How do we determine whether or not a carabiner is in peak working condition? Well, we have to, it, it all depends on the carabiner basically. So here's an array of carabiners of different types and I'll just quickly go over each type and how I personally would inspect it. So, here's a basic, you know, carabiner, um, just a basic gate, and nothing fancy about it. As I'm doing this, I'm looking to make sure that there's enough resistance for this to close, and then, and that it does so consistently, and then I'm going to pull it back just behind this you know, um, little portion here, and I'm gonna let it go. Just make sure that, you know, because it's, it's very easy for a carabiner to snap closed at full resistance, like that, because it's got the full power of the spring. But what happens when you bring it just behind, you know, the, the latch here, as long as it's doing what it's supposed to do. This is perfect. There's nothing wrong with this. This is a, I give this a pass. Now, next, we have one with a screw gate. So the first thing I'm gonna test is the screw gate. I'm going to see how easy or difficult it is to, you know, screw and unscrew it. And I'm looking for it to do something very specific. When I, I want it, when I, a good screw gate carabiner, when you close it and you tighten it, it should kind of lock a little bit. Not so much that you're unable to open it, but so that you can feel comfortable that it's not going to come undone unless a good amount of force is applied to it. So see how it locked there? So now it's undone and then you want it to do the same thing at the top. So you want to make sure that it's not going to actually go down on you because that can prevent you from opening it when it's really important to be able to have free access to the gate. Um, so now here, see it, it, it got nice and tight there, so that's good. Um, now, just like the other one, I'm looking for it to um, have a good amount of resistance. This one is strong, consistently strong. I don't detect any, you know, undesirable resistance in this joint here. I'm also looking, um, same with this one, I didn't mention this, but we're looking for this um, right here, this rivet. We want to make sure that it looks good and that there's nothing, you know, no corrosion, no dirt, no anything in this area here. Um, so we want to make sure that this is clear and clean. And so this, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring the gate back and make sure that it closes. And this is very consistent. I give this a pass. So this is another screw gate carabiner, same exact concept, except it's an HMS. Um, here's an HMS, but it's a double action locking gate. So these are all double action locking gates. And so what I look for with this is um, you want to make sure that First of all, just the, the gate is not going to open on its own. You just want to test to make sure that it does lock. And then you want to twist it. It should twist freely. And then pull it back. And just try this out a few times. Twist open. Make sure that you know that the next time you use this carabiner that you can feel confident that this gate is functioning as it should. 
So it's double action, meaning you twist and pull. Um, and then now we're going to put, have it full, fully twisted open and then let it go. Put it back, let it go. Put it just behind, let it go. Now this one is doing beautifully. It is locking as it's supposed to. And that is just great. So next we have, um, sorry, I had to get something. This is the mystery carabiner. We have now um, another double locker. It's smaller. This is a DMM Perfecto. Um, these are, I've never had a problem with a DMM carabiner in my life. And same concept, twist, pull back, and make sure everything's working. By the way, I gave that a pass. Um, so twist, pull back, and then same thing with the gate. These are just amazing. So this is a pass. Now if this, you know, this works the same way, but I'm not going to test that because, you know, you already know how to do it. But this, notice this has a little apparatus here, this little wire gate to um, allow for easier belaying and descending. So we want to just examine the rivet, or the not the rivet, but the, um, the wires here, and make sure that they're in the right place and that nothing is wonky. Give it a few pushes down, and, you know, this is just... It's strong, you know, I can trust it. You don't want to, if, if it feels weak and flimsy, um, then you don't want that. Um, you want a really, it wants, you want it to resist and have a good spring action. Now, next we have triple lockers. So, um, here's a Petzl OK carabiner, and I love these. It's got great grip on them, and then so... Um, the difference between this and this is that now you have a third motion to do. So you have to go up, left, and then pull. So there is more going on with this carabiner. Once again, you're going to check the rivets. And, you know, always you're just going to be looking around the carabiner itself. Um, looking for fractures or any types of uh, corrosion or damage that might be of concern. Uh, you're not just focusing on the gate. You want to focus on the body as well, uh, the frame. And so with this, I'm going, testing it, going up, twisting, pulling, and do that several times. Make sure that it's not, you know, if it's got, you know, it's pretty common to get like grit and sand and stuff in these devices. And all you can do, you can, you can use a vacuum to try and suck it out of there. That's one way to do it. Um, or you can, um, you can, you know, soak it in water and, you know, you can use a light detergent if you want, but I think just water is fine. Unless you have grease or something on it or sap, you really don't want to be introducing chemicals. Um, even soap, you know, it sounds really benign, but it is very basic, so it can cause damage um, over time if you especially if you're regularly doing it um, so you know once again this is really strong I can bring it back here no problem it's just I mean this is beautiful and then you know these are all the same thing this is a perfecto with a triple action and this is just, these DMM carabiners, oh my god, they're just beautiful. Everything is just so, I mean, if you have ever felt the gate, you know, and the mechanism here of a DMM carabiner, you know that, like, it's just, it means business. It's ready to do what you want it to do. And so this is a pass. Um, now we get into... Um, I want to show you actually a carabiner that I know is not going to pass and why. So here's, you know, something made out of Chineseium. It's, you know, um, from overseas. I don't even remember where I got this or why I even have it, but 
it's perfect for showing you that not all carabiners are created equal. Look at that. First try, and it just completely didn't do its job. See that? That's really bad. If that even happens once, you should seriously question the integrity of the carabiner. Because um, this doesn't happen unless, you know, there's a problem. And now look, it's it's jammed. It's, it's stuck. Imagine trying to work with something like this. I don't even know how you would. It would, it could, it could kill you. Look at that. It's consistently messed up. And then if you do it from right here, it did it this time, did it this time, did it this time. Well, now it's behaving. But, <laughs> oh, look at that. It doesn't like to be interesting because usually it's the far away that doesn't, that works all the time, but the close up doesn't. So watch this. That worked. Yeah, there we go. So this is, um, I only kept this because I wanted to show you um, that it's completely a throwaway. This is, one important note is that when you decommission your carabiners, when you decide that they're not fit for duty and that you find a flaw and whatever, it is good practice to not just throw them away, but to actually destroy them. Um, take a hammer or anything, just, just so long as, you know, obviously this is, these are tough materials, but just make it so it's abundantly apparent to anyone who is picking through the trash that this is broken, that it does not work as it's supposed to. So take a hammer to it, you know, completely make it even worse and make sure that no one will mistake this for a functional carabiner. So... It's good karma. Now, here's a double action. Um, um, what do they call these? They're not carabiners, but um, I don't know. I'm I'm going brain dead right here with this. But um, yeah, this is um, a popular type of you know connection device that is used. Um, so. Usually on like flip lines, you'll find these. So the way these work is you push the back and then open the gate. Without pushing the back, these should not open. So they also make a triple action version of these. So what you want to make sure you do with the double action is ensure that the gate does not open um, you know, in any way without depressing the back here and then when you do do depress it make sure that it hold it down and then consistently make sure that it opens okay and then do this one time let go of it try it again depress it do this do this and then make sure it locks so that's how I and with a triple action you would want to depress one of them and not the second one, which is usually down here by the gate, and just make sure that the gate doesn't open. It wouldn't open or shouldn't open if you have only one of them depressed. So do that one and then depress this one and not that one and make sure the gate still remains locked. Um, now here I have some accessory carabiners. Yes, I test my accessory carabiners regularly. Um, you want to make sure that these are functioning. I don't mess around with cheap um, accessory carabiners because they just break and become useless. This here is a DMM XSRE um, carabiner. And it is amazing. It has um, you know a screw gate here. And, you know, you just want to make sure, just like a regular carabiner, that this is working properly. And these are rated for actually 4 kilonewtons. So they're, as DMM says, they're uh, small but mighty. <laughs> so here's another version, just with a regular gate. Um, you just want to test this, make sure. So, because um, you don't want to be climbing, like, you know, you got your chest harness on and you're doing SRS and you 
um, all of a sudden you're halfway up the line and then your accessory carabiner breaks. Like, that would just suck. You'd have to ascend your multi-sender by hand. And, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it would just be annoying. Uh, so, anyway, here, this is not a carabiner, but it technically is. So, with these, what I do is I make sure that this doesn't go through, you know. And then, what I also do is I take, I, it's got these um, slick pins here. Well, this is a slick pin, but it's got these little things here that you depress to open it up. So, I would do one, you know, try it with both, and then try it with just one and make sure it still doesn't open in any orientation. And then next you can pull it through and just kind of make sure that these little pins don't get stuck. So just push them a few times. Okay, just it's kind of relaxing. <laughs> and just make sure that they don't get stuck. And then once you've done that, it's good to go. So, hey, I just, you know, did all these carabiners, like, well, most of them, in only a few minutes. And, you know, I hope you learned something from this. And I hope that, you know, you understand that there can be situations where if you, if your carabiner gets loaded really hard, um, or if it gets dropped from a huge height onto, you know, like cement or onto a rock and you don't see how it hit and it just, sometimes there are situations where you could have a carabiner for a day and because of something that happened to it, um, like an, a rare event, you could have to decommission it that same day and just get rid of it and destroy it and never use it again just because it's better to just buy another $20 piece of equipment, you know, another carabiner for 20 bucks than to, you know, risk your life on something that just got like, you know, either hit really hard and, you know, or it's just got, it's just suspect. So better be safe than sorry. Anyways, this has been long enough. Thanks so much for watching. Um, this has been a how-to on how to inspect your carabiners. And if you like this, please hit like. Uh, feel free to give questions or comments below. And consider subscribing if you enjoy my content. Uh, I regularly post videos of all kinds of things. And check out my library. I've got all kinds of interesting videos. So thanks for watching. Notorious out.